And what also makes Naughty by Nature legendary is not just their sound, it's their marketing genius. The Again, I'm wearing their shirt, Naughty by Nature, support yeah. it, yes. What made you come up with the, not only a logo, but a clothing brand? I, and I believe, if y'all not the first, y'all want to be <laughs> first to create your own brand outside of like Run DMC and like Salt and Pepper. But y'all took right. it to another level. Yeah, definitely. Well, for one, um, Flavor Unit got assigned to uh, Tommy Boy Records. So once we came out with the name Naughty by Nature, our first video was OPP. I was just talking to someone about this. If you look at OPP's video, on the DJ booth, there's a sign there. It's not the Naughty by Nature logo. It's just Naughty by Nature written out in a generic font, generic letters. We didn't even have the logo yet. But thanks to Miss Monica Lynch, she was the, in the art department. She was in the marketing and promotions department. She worked with an art director, Mark Weinberg, and they came up with the logo. They came up with the logo that you're wearing right now. So the story goes that they were meeting in a restaurant and they talked about a youthful vibe for the logo. So Mark Weinberg, he had a crayon writing on a dinner napkin. And he came up with the two words, but he didn't have the bat yet. So they kind of sat with him, like, we're missing an icon, and they came up with the bat. Uh, how the logo was actually created is on our YouTube channel. And you look up Mark Weinberg, you'll see it. But he made a big bat and then scaled it down to fit the size of the napkin. And uh, we own that napkin. It's definitely a hip-hop artifact. So the original Naughty by Nature logo... Uh, exists you know so from there uh tommy boy actually made the first down with opp t-shirt and the naughty by nature boxers and the down with opp sticker but back in the day as the new style we always had new style jackets new style t-shirts and everywhere we went we always rolled deep so you know, new style was more of our stuff because back in the day, everyone had a posse and everyone had jackets and tees. But once we had a brand brand like Naughty by Nature and the Down with OPP and the boxers and the stickers, man, we had our whole crew. And here's what we've always done. No matter what the label created, we always went in our pocket, invested in more inventory. So we did that pivot. So no matter what the label had, they sent out promotional goods to different DJs around the country, but we wanted our own supply. So instead of us stressing the label for it, we went in our pockets and always made our own t-shirts, our own boxers, our own uh, stickers, and we went up and down the Garden State Parkway, the Turnpike, stuck it on all the toll booths. I mean, we had that stuff everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, was your own street everywhere. team, too. Yes, we were our own street team, and we began selling the goods, uh, you know, our merchandise from our block on 18th Street. So if you can imagine, OPP was red hot. We literally had people coming from Pennsylvania, North Carolina, D.C., just to come to our block and see us. And KG's mom and sister, they were there just banging out, selling the teas and stuff. And it got to the point where the cops literally raided our block so we couldn't sell the merch anymore and that's when i made another pivot yet another pivot and i opened the store downtown north because that was the thing like we had so many kids with us and we were street kids coming off the block but once we got legitimate with our music we had x amount of kids we could take on tour with us but the people who were left behind, we figured, you know what? If we open up a retail store, we can give these kids a job and, and have them learn how to run a retail business, run the clothing line. And that's what we had. We just wanted to take everyone out of the streets, keep them, you know, out of harm's way and, and legitimize their lives. That's that's the pivot we tried to make. And, and I believe y'all, if again, if I did my research correctly, y'all were probably one of the first rap groups to open your own store. I mean, I know we had, um, yeah. oh my God, Dapper Dan that created his clothing yeah. store, but he wasn't in the rap. He got into the fashion, but I believe y'all were the first yeah. to have y'all um, own store. 
Well, you know what it was? Uh, we were inspired by Spike Lee because we had LaShawn Coleman. She's my Class 88 member. And Hassan Mateen, they're both from East Orange. They worked for Spike's Joint clothing store in the heart of Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn. So as we were coming up, Spike, you know, back then he had Malcolm X, 40 Acres in a Mule gear. And he had his store right in the heart of Brooklyn. So when I mm -hmm. saw that, I was like, wow. This would be dope if we were able to do that in our hometown. So lo and behold, we opened the store downtown Newark, and there was another uh, artist who inspired me, Play from Kid and Play. Back in the day in Queens, he had a barber shop, and he had a similar custom shop like Dapper Dan had. So he was doing that out in Queens, and our boy Bumpy Knuckles, Freddie Fox, took me out there to see that. So we were inspired by Spike Lee. We were inspired mm -hmm. by what Play from Kid and Play did, and then mm -hmm. that's what made me pull the trigger. And like, you know what? This stuff mm -hmm. makes sense. Oh, another uh, group who inspired me was the S1Ws uh, from Public Enemy. So our first major tour, we went out with the S1Ws from Public Enemy, and we would see them. They were marching and all that. Public Enemy always had, pardon me, great merchandise. So when we were on tour, we asked them, well, what do you guys do when you go home? They were like, we run the merchandise, all of the mail order stuff. We fulfill orders and all of that. So I was like, you know what? All of these different elements just doubles down on the fact that we can employ our people. So if we go on tour, we could take cats out. The people who are left behind could work at the store. Then when we come off the tour, we could have these kids work the store as well. So it was that kind of inspiration. And definitely we inspired tons of other artists. I remember in particular, P. Diddy, Sean Combs called Shaq Kim from Flavor Unit. It was like, get me on the phone with Vin. I want to see how he's doing this because I wanted to do bad boy clothing, but someone took that name and I have to make a pivot. So lo and behold, he got me on the phone. I explained to him how I was doing it, but I'm like, look, I'm doing this locally with a local sporting goods store. You should kind of go for a larger license, a larger manufacturer. And lo and behold, Diddy came with Sean John and took the game to another level. So it's all love and hip hop.